FDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and let's talk about some lands that I think you might be putting in too many of your commander decks. I've made a few of these videos recently talking about lands that are, of course, absolute staples in the commander format that I think are probably getting played a bit too much. Because they are staples, right? It's one of those things where, you know, I just put that in my deck because I put it in all my decks, right? Maybe you're playing it too much. I am particularly doing this one because I am going to make a video about mana bases coming up and covering a lot of these individual lands that are played a lot in the format will make it so that I don't have to make a two hour video talking about mana bases. I can cover a lot of the individual stuff that I'm going to touch on in that video. So let's start out with, of course, a video. Very stapley commander staple, Myriad Landscape. Of course, enters the battlefield tapped, taps to add a colorless, and you pay two and tap, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. I first will say, I am not telling you guys not to play any of these lands. All these lands certainly can see play. I just think they're in too many decks. They're in more decks than they should be in. So I will tell you where I don't think you should be playing Myriad Landscape. I mean, first of all, this is a land that enters the battlefield tapped and only taps for colorless. Already, I'm thinking that's not a card I want to put in a lot of decks. Having a land enter the battlefield tapped and then only give me colorless mana, whew, that's a lot of drawback right out of the gate. It does ramp though. That's why this card became such a commander staple because it is a ramp option for colors that don't do that so well and so obviously for that reason I'm never going to play this in a deck in colors that do ramp really well. Never would I put this card in a green deck. Not ever. Green obviously ramps way better than any color and in fact so much so that whenever you're talking about ramp in the commander format you basically have to talk about it in two separate discussions. Are we playing a green deck or are we not? If you're playing a green deck, your conversation around ramp is going to be completely different than if you're not playing a green deck. I don't want to delve too much into that, though. You can go check out my ramp video if you want to know more about my thoughts there. I'm definitely not putting Myriad Landscape in a green deck. Way, way too slow and not good at all as far as a ramp option goes. I mean, first of all, search your library for two basic land cards that share a land type. So I got to get the same ones. If I'm in a mono green deck, this is going to get me two forests and put it into play. And don't forget you're sacrificing your myriad landscape so essentially you're paying three mana to put one land into play right because you're down a land but up two lands almost any other green option is going to be better right a rampant growth is two mana to get one extra land into play a cultivate is three mana get an extra land into play and also one into my hand, right? So every single green option that you are going to have is better than a myriad landscape. I really don't think you should ever be putting a myriad landscape in any deck that is even green a little bit, right? Even a five color deck. I mean, I don't know why you would put Mary Landscape in a five color deck. How many basic lands are you gonna have in your five color deck, right? That's another thing. People are playing less and less basic lands in their deck entirely. I would never put Myriad Landscape in any deck that's more than one color, in fact. I only put Myriad Landscape in my mono color decks. So where am I gonna play it? I'm gonna play it in a mono colored deck that isn't green. So my mono red, mono white, mono black, and mono blue decks, it's not even a for sure, it's a maybe for me in those decks. I think white is at the point now where it ramps good enough that we don't need to be using Myriad Landscape in there either. I took this out of my mono white decks. So I'm now down to just mono red, mono black, and mono blue decks where I am playing Myriad Landscape. Likely you are playing this card too much. Let's talk about Temple of False God again. Talk about a commander staple. This is one that pretty much was an auto include in everyone's commander decks. When I first started playing the commander format, it was actually pretty pricey as well before they started literally printing it in every single commander set. It has now been reprinted 38 times. 38 times they've reprinted this card in like the last seven or eight years. That is a lot of printings for this card. And I think it's likely in way too many commander decks. Now, getting to the green argument again, let's go back to that. Because whenever we're talking about, you know, I, I guess this is sort of ramp because of course it taps to add two colorless, but you can only activate it if you control five or more lands. So of course, if you don't have five or more lands, it doesn't do anything. It taps for zero mana. And a lot of people will make the argument that this is actually better in a green deck because you can ramp so you can get to five lands quicker, which turns this on quicker. Sure, 
You could make that argument. I disagree, though. The downside of this card is I don't have five lands, right? If I got five lands in play, of course, this card's amazing. It taps for two colorless mana. The argument that you can make for not playing it is it's not very good on turn one, two, or three, essentially, right? And even in a green deck, it's not good on one, two, or three. Having this card in your opening hand is pretty bad because likely it's going to be doing nothing for a while. And even in a green deck, it's likely not going to be very good on turn one, two, or three. So no, I'm not putting this in my green decks because even though I can get to five lands faster in a green deck, it is still bad in the situation where it's typically going to be bad, which is early in the game. You're not going to be able to tap this guy to cast a cultivate, right? So it is still going to hinder you in that situation. And again, because it's tapping for colorless mana, I don't love it outside of monocolor decks as well. I have this, I think maybe in only one deck right now, and that is my colorless deck. That is the one place where I probably would find room for this because this card essentially has two decks. Downsides. I know people will look at this and think it only has one downside, the fact that you need to have five lands in play. Well, no, it actually has two downsides, which is it doesn't mana fix. It only adds colorless mana. I think people sometimes overlook that. This card is terrible in a three color deck, I think, because it's only tapping for colorless mana. Obviously, the colorless part of the downside is erased if you're in a colorless deck. That's why I have it in my colorless deck. I still have to wait to have five lands in play, but at least the fact that it only adds colorless mana, that part, I don't have to worry about it. I still would put this maybe in a monocolored deck. Again, not a green monocolored deck, but a red, blue, white, or black monocolored deck. I think this is a pretty good fit. But again, because it is only adding colorless mana, once you get up higher in the amount of colors you're playing in your deck, it gets even worse, right? Not only do I have the downside of it only adds mana if I have five lands in play, but it's also just adding colorless mana. You got to keep that in mind as well. I think this card is certainly overplayed in the format. And if you thought I've been controversial in this video so so far, wait till I get some of these last ones here. Ancient Tomb. That's right. Ancient Tomb is a card that I think is horribly overplayed in the form. Matt. I actually think this card's not very good. Again, this is a casual commander channel, guys. Don't forget, if you're playing a CEDH deck, go nuts. Throw this in there. I think this is an auto include for CEDH players. Although I will point out again, just like Temple of the False God, this is only adding colorless mana, right? Adds two colorless and deals two damage to you. So again, the more colors I get up there, the worse this card gets. I've heard people say this is an auto include for them in a commander deck and it makes every commander deck better. Well, hold on a sec. If I'm in a five color deck, this is only adding colorless mana. I mean, yeah, it's adding two mana, but I would much rather have a City of Brass in my five color deck because of course that's giving me any color of mana I need. And that to me is more important in a five color deck than is adding two mana, but it's colorless. For me, it is much more likely that a City of Brass is going to be useful to me in my five color deck over an Ancient Tomb. And likely in a four color deck or even a three color deck as well. So again, just like with the Temple of False God, there is multiple downsides here. This is a land that only adds colorless mana. I know it's adding two mana, but people are overlooking the fact that this is only adding colorless mana. It's not mana fixing. That is a downside to this. But of course, the biggest downside here is deals two damage to you every time you tap it. That's really bad. And again, this is one of those cards that, and I know I'm going to get tons of pushback here, cards like Mana Crypt and Soul Ring, which everyone always imagines the best scenario. And of course, the best scenario is playing it on turn one or turn two or early in the game where it's extra good. And I'm not going to get into the whole don't make yourself a target argument, which I've talked about so many times before, which in the best scenario where those cards are doing the most work, it's actually a drawback as well, because guess what? you're making yourself a target on turn one, Ancient Tomb, the same argument fits there. But also it gets even worse for you with the Ancient Tomb because not only are you making yourself a target on turn one by playing it, you're also making it worse for you in the long run because it's dealing two damage to you. In the scenario where you draw this card later in the game, it's really, really bad because of course, later in the game, you don't really need the mana that much, but also your life total's really low. So you're not even gonna wanna be using it. And in fact, I can't count the amount of times I've seen someone with an ancient tomb in play later in the game that's just a dead land. They're not even tapping it because of course they can't take the damage. But it's also funny enough, not that good in the ideal situation. Again, remember, we're playing casual commander, guys. You're not going to have the game over on turn four or five, or at least you shouldn't in a casual commander game. And unlike Mana Crypt, where there's a chance you don't take any damage, Ancient Tomb, it's always dealing you damage. And I say all the time to people, keep track. You love 
Ancient Tomb so much. Turn one Ancient Tomb is such a fantastic play. Keep track of the damage it is dealing you. I promise you it's way more than you think it is. And if you get it early in the game, which is when you ideally want it, it actually gets worse because of course it's dealing you two damage every turn for the whole game. So it's going to do even more damage because you're using it more, right? It's it's sort of a catch-22 there where, yeah, I want it early, but if you get it early, that's when it's doing the most damage. Keep track of the damage it's doing you. I bet you would be surprised by the outcome there. This is an absolute no-no for me. I would never put this card in a commander deck unless maybe I was gaining a ton of life. I guess maybe it might work there because, of course, the downside isn't really much of a downside. Of course, it's also expensive, which is another reason not to waste your money. But if this was a $1 card, I would have it in zero decks still because I actually don't think it's that great. Yes, it speeds your deck up a little bit, but I could make the argument that speeding your deck up is also a downside as well. I know people are going to disagree agree with me on this one, but this is a card that I would never put in a commander deck. And since I already have people enraged at me because I don't think Ancient Tomb should be played nearly as much as it is, Nykthos Shrine to Nyx is the card I'm going to end off with here. That's right, this card is played too much. Just like with Cabal Coffers, though, the same argument I made there, this is specific situations where it's fantastic, but other situations where it's really not that good and I think people are overplaying it. And again, just like Ancient Tomb, it's kind of an expensive card, so maybe you should be saving your money here. So if you have haven't seen it before it's a legendary land taps to add a colorless but you can pay two and tap it choose a color add an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color this is a situation again just like a ball coffers where i have to go through the math and see if it's worth it for me so of course i'm going to be tapping two lands to pay for this plus this land so i'm going to be tapping three lands to add a certain amount of mana if I want to activate the ability. So of course I want to get at minimum three mana out of this in order to even have it break even for me. But of course, if I want it to break even, I can just tap it for colorless mana. So of course I want to get more than that. So that means I want to get four mana out of this. If I want to actually get an advantage out of it, that means of course I have to have a devotion of four. You have to have at least a devotion of four in play of that one color. This is where things get tricky in order for this to even get me anything other than just, I can just tap it for one mana. In order for me to make it worth it to run out and pay $40 for this card to put it in my deck to actually get give me more than one mana, I have to have at least a devotion to four, which of course can be really, really difficult if you're in any deck above one color. Again, for me, Nykthos probably could be an auto include in any mono colored deck. Of course, not a colorless deck. That isn't going to work very well. But any other deck, even a mono green deck, again, this is where I would make the exception there because even in a mono green deck where ramping is not a problem, you could stick this and it will still probably be pretty good because it's very easy to have four pips of the same color in your mono green deck and of course, any other monocolor deck as well. Other than the price on this card, it's very easy to slot this into any monocolor deck and it's gonna be fantastic for you and very easily will be giving you more than one mana and could possibly be giving you a whole lot of mana. As soon as we get above that, as soon as we get to two colors, again, just like with Cabal Coffers, man, I likely am not gonna be playing this. I see this in two color decks all the time and I just do not think it's very good. The reason why is because not only is the devotion to that one color going to be less likely because you're playing playing two colors, but also you can only add one color with it, right? And after all of that, I'm only doing it to add an extra one mana, right? All that work you're putting in, you're only getting an extra one mana. And that is a scenario that, in my opinion, in a two color deck is not entirely likely. How easy is it going to be for you to get at least four pips on your devotion for this land in a two color deck? And I think in a three color deck, damn near impossible. I mean, your opponents would have to not be playing any removal, essentially. Maybe you're in a play group where your opponents just don't cast board wipes. So for you to have four or five or six pips of a certain color in your three color deck is very possible. I'm going to tell your pod they should probably be playing removal if that is the case. Having that many pips on the table of a certain color in a three color deck seems really unlikely, in my opinion. In a two color deck, it's certainly possible. For me, this is auto include in a monocolor deck. It's probably incredible in most monocolor decks. In a two color deck, I'm starting to get 
get wary. Obviously, your commander could be a big difference maker here. Maybe you just have a commander with a lot of devotion on it. So just having your commander in play could make it worthwhile. That certainly could be the case. Obviously, depending on the deck you're playing is always going to make a big difference there, right? But just think, even in just a two-color deck, is it going to be possible for you to get four or more devotion in a single color regularly, right? Not just once. Once in a game, I've gotten five devotion to white in my Azorius deck. I mean, is that worth paying $40 to put this card in your deck? You know, maybe, maybe not. Are you regularly going to have four or more devotion for one color in your two color deck? I think it's unlikely. So for me, this is monocolor deck, fantastic. Two color deck, iffy. Anything above that, no chance. And while we're on the subject of saving you guys money, another land or group of lands that you could save yourself some money by avoiding putting in your deck is fetch lands. And of course, these are fantastic, particularly for mana fixing, of course, because they can fetch shock lands and triumphs and all that kind of stuff. However, they are played too much, and I will only bring up one specific situation where I think they are overplayed, and that's in monocolor deck. Yeah, that's right. People are actually playing fetch lands in their mono colored deck. So for example, in a mono white deck, someone might play a windswept heath and a flooded strand. A lot of people might be scratching their head asking why. Well, the methodology here is that you are deck thinning by getting lands out of your deck. I think that's kind of a waste of time to be quite honest. For me, it's not even worth the one life you're paying to get one basic land out of your deck. That strategy works better in 60 card formats where you don't need a lot of lands right? You want to be making lots of land drops in the commander format. So if I have a windswept teeth on turn one, I crack it, go get a planes out of my library and put it into play. Remember, I'm not mana fixing here. That's what fetch lands are great for. I'm only using fetch lands to thin out my deck. That's specifically the strategy I'm talking about here where you can save yourself the money. Now, I just took a land out of my deck and put it directly into play on turn one. So I've thinned the lands out of my deck. Okay, but why do I want to thin in the lands out of my deck on turn one because I want to lessen the chance that I'm drawing lands from turn one onward. Why do I want to do that? Maybe I have a really low mana curve, but other than that, why do you want to decrease the chances that you're going to draw lands early in the game? Don't you want to be making land drops? And again, in a mono white deck or any other mono colored deck that isn't green, you're not going to have a lot of great ramping options. So making land drops is really, really important. So again, just from a money saving standpoint, Endpoint, putting fetch lands in your monocolored decks, I'm just talking specifically about that situation, which I have seen quite a bit, save yourself the money. I don't think it's worth it to thin out your deck. That's a 60 card format strategy that I don't think translates very well into a commander. That's my opinion though. I know a lot of people are gonna be differing with me on this one for sure. I'm likely gonna hear it in the comments. Absolutely with some of these, because of course we got some commander staples here and we also have cards like Ancient Tomb that people just think is an auto include in every commander deck. I mean, I'll just say this, most casual commander games you are losing because your life total is being reduced to zero. So if your Ancient Tomb is doing you 16 damage over the course of the game, is it actually worth it? That's all I'm saying. You guys let me know in the comments below what you think that is it for today though and thanks for tuning in